So I had a bit of a surprise phone call uh, the other day. Uh, it was from Octopus Energy and they've decided to move my installation date up to the 4th of December and they've assembled a small army of people to come and uh, spend three to five days uh, hitting the house hard to get the whole thing um, installed. So I'll get a heat pump and obviously a hot water tank will need to go in. Now it's the 18th of November right now, so it took me a while to read that, which is a Saturday. So I've got a couple of weeks before they are gonna come on site and do this work. The problem is uh, the hot water tank needs to go here. And this is where my cats sort of live. There's a couple of shelves there, that's where they get fed. And that's one of their beds and they're not gonna be too happy about this. So I've gotta find them somewhere else to uh, sort of sleep and eat. But one of the bigger problems is, because the hot water tank is going to go here, I've got this massive shelf here as well. Now there's all sorts of rubbish here. I've got camping stuff that never gets used, but I still need to keep just in case. Uh, hundreds of toilet rolls, our bulk buy fabric conditioner and bottles and stuff, welly boots, uh, wetsuit boots, uh, beach stuff for the children who are way too old to use beach stuff now. Um, and a workbench, and obviously my fridge, uh, no, my freezer is here. So I've got a huge amount of stuff to clear out and put somewhere else in this garage. But the problem is this garage is full of junk. So I've got to clear this whole garage out. I'm just going to turn the camera around. I think I might put the shelf here somewhere, uh, but I've got these boxes on the floor that I've got to clear up and uh, loads of paint tubs that need to get moved somewhere else. So uh, back to me, um, I guess, wish me luck. Probably the most amount of exercise I've done in quite a while, uh, but I now have a nice empty space where the heat pumps uh, water cylinder can go. Um, I think there's gonna be like an expansion tank on top. Obviously the boiler's gonna come out. Uh, clearly I've just moved most of the junk down the other end of the garage. So uh, I've not really done much of a tidy up, but I have got a pile of stuff that uh, is ready to be thrown out. So it's good to have a clear out as well, I suppose. Only one minor injury of dropping a chair on my foot. So um, there is one more task I've got to do before uh, the heat pump can be installed. And that is to pull the plastic soft fit or fascia boards off. So as we can see the wood that's underneath and hopefully measure it up and make sure there's enough room for the uh, pipes to go through when they've got the lagging on. I don't think it'll be a problem. We've got two bricks plus uh, a beam so they can attach it to all of that. Um, should be able to get the electric cables run across this side of the garage too. So hopefully next stop is heat pump installation day. So before I get the boiler ripped out, I wanted to give you an idea of what the noise levels were like with the boiler, because this is pretty noisy actually. Uh, and then we can have some sort of baseline to compare it against when the heat pump goes in. So I've got a tape measure here and we want to measure about a meter, which is roughly here, so a meter from the flue is floating in midair here. And I'm gonna use my Apple Watch. I'm gonna use the noise app on my Apple Watch. The background noise, if I'm talking, is 52. So let me be quiet for a second. So you can see 36 decibels of background noise. So let's fire up the boiler and see what it's like uh, when that's going. There we go, you can hear it, it's fired up now. Let's have a look at the watch. So let's get my video going. I'm gonna have a look at my watch and see what it's 
saying on here. So it's hovering around 45 to 46 decibels, which is quite noisy at one meter away for a gas flue, really. I guess this is a very old one, so newer ones would probably be quieter than this, but um, at least now we've got a reference point for when we look at how much noise the heat pump makes. Installation day has arrived. There's three guys from Octopus Energy here to do the install, and uh, they're currently working hard in the garage. There's a pallet full of stuff on my drive at the moment. I can see a hot water tank there. I'm gonna have a look at that in a bit. And uh, you might be able to see an Octopus Energy van outside of my window just there. So uh, I think it's a bit of a challenge. I've been around and taken all the Evo Home kit out, um, all the valves off the radiators. So that should be one less thing um, for them to worry about, but uh, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, they said three to five days, so let's see how day one goes. I've switched to the GoPro because it's absolutely pouring it down with rain as usual in Wales. So let's have a look at this pallet that's arrived. Got a hot water tank in the biggest box here. There's an octopus branded box full of bits the filter, loads of copper fittings and things for the radiators. And this massive box here has got to be the heat pump itself, I assume. It's got my name on it. And another pallet here with radiators on and loads of pipe insulation here, of course. That's going to be very necessary. So we're getting towards the end of day one and I wanted to show the progress so far. So the guys are inside actually working on changing all the radiators upstairs at the moment. I think they've almost finished there. Uh, meanwhile, the electrician has been busy in here. Uh, he's actually spliced the uh, connections on the load side of my Give Energy gateway and he's taken that through to a new consumer unit here which is going to feed the heat pump. Uh, there's going to be another consumer unit going outside as well right next to the heat pump um, and oh what else and the heat pump is actually here. So we've got it dragged inside the garage for the moment and the water tank is just here and it's not as big as I thought. I thought it was going to be humongous. I mean it is 250 litres but um, I thought it was going to be taller than me but turns out it's all right. So they've left for the day. That's the end of day one. Um, I've had to get the old Evo home system working and I totally forgot obviously because I've removed all of those valves I've had to reconfigure this to work as just a single zone now so that was a bit uh, touch and go because I haven't configured this for like six or seven years uh, but they have put down some nice uh, plastic flooring to protect the floor so uh, that was nice of them so all the floor is really well protected uh, but I'll just go and show you the radiators they've installed. So here's one of the radiators they've installed this is the one in my main bedroom and it's a little shorter than the old one was uh, but because it's got the fins at the back it's got a lot more surface area so it should pump out uh, a lot more heat. Um, it's quite nice to see it here because it's uh, a lot newer and the old one was getting a bit tatty and rusty really so uh, I think this looked quite smart um, but yeah tomorrow's job is downstairs radiators and they're gonna start working on the plant room or the back of, back of my garage as I call it and to try and get all the pipe work in there and I think the gas engineer is coming to disconnect the boiler as well so this is the last night of having gas central heating tomorrow night's gonna be very cold Anyway, this is the end of this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video so as you can find out what happens uh, in part two.